8, the Saturn V 2.0. Bigger and more powerful in every way, this rocket design was created for a future that needed over 1 million pounds of payload per launch. And you bet it was designed to be reusable, despite landing without rockets or parachutes right into a boiling sea. Convair had the vision for a mega rocket, one that could be powered by nuclear fuels, carry an entire moon base, and help conquer the solar system with an ambitious timeline to prove it. In the early 1960s, as NASA was planning to go to the moon with a Saturn V, engineers got to work planning out the possibility of a permanent human presence on the lunar surface. A hundred man moon base that would not only require 33,000 pounds of materials per Earth year to sustain, but three and a half million pounds to even construct in the first place. 70 times more than that that is carried by the space shuttle. Thus, a new chemically fueled mega rocket would be needed to get this material into orbit. A Saturn 2.0, if you would, that would be able to launch a vast mass of payload into space even with nuclear upper stages. The pitch was thrown out by the NASA Future Projects office in 1962 and Convair answered the call. Unlike the other projects under development, such as the advanced versions of the Saturn V or the Nova Booster, which we'll both cover in a future video, Convair saw the millions of pounds of payload capacity as a challenge. And just like the manly men that they are trying to bring all the shopping in at once, they designed a rocket to carry everything. This is the Convair Nexus. This would be a single stage to orbit vehicle that could carry 1 million pounds of payload and was designed to be reusable. Thanks to thinking big, the rocket would have incredible economic advantages. It would be roughly the same cost to design as the smaller rocket like the Saturn, although without the complexity that comes with multiple stages. Plus, the bigger rocket could carry more pounds of payload, negating the need for multiple launches and multiple rockets. Less launches, less launch facilities and crew required and thus a cheaper cost. And these economical reasons made Convair very excited indeed to move ahead with the project. So what exactly was the Nexus rocket like? The Nexus was a pretty squat rocket with a tapered rocket stage up to the payload. This wide base gave it plenty of space for large internal fuel tanks of liquid hydrogen. This tank itself was in the shape of a cone rather than the sphere or a cylinder, which allowed for separate oxygen tanks, 24 of them, to be ringed around at the base. On the sides of the rocket, there were also four flaps that was helped to control the rocket during re-entry. But we'll get to that insane process in a moment. The fuel tank supported a number of individual high pressure hydrogen oxygen rocket engines that could be developed from a number of programs being done at the time, allowing the rocket much needed flexibility. Just in case there was to be issues with the performance of the rocket, there was a capacity to include up to 12 solid rocket motors attached to the boosters from the Titan 3C to give it an additional 1000 feet per second during launches. And it wasn't ruled out to use nuclear engines for these boosters either. Speaking of nuclear, there was a plan to change the upper stage into a nuclear pulse engine, a la Orion rocket. That's right, nuclear bomb detonations. To still make the Nexus reusable with this insane payload, it would detach and immediately fire retro rockets to get away as quickly as possible. But you bet we'll do a deep dive into the Orion program in another video because it's simply so insane, so be sure to subscribe for that one. 
There are also two main Nexus designs under consideration, one that could carry 1 million pounds and the other one double the size for double the mission. The economies of scale made sense, but the bigger one would have required those boosters almost definitely, despite a lower effective specific impulse required to get going. Now that that's all out of the way, we can get to the fun stuff, like launching this impossibly huge rocket. For launching, a new launch site was proposed, almost massive compared to the size of the current one used for the Saturn V and the Space Shuttle, around 700 miles from the nearest human settlement. Because it was so loud, it was believed that ferrying the rocket out to sea would be better, especially because the launch itself would generate window-shattering shockwaves. Oh, by the way, it wouldn't use a land crawler to get around the launch site, but a barge. As in a barge in a canal. It was too heavy and it was thought that it would be better to ride around on the water surfaced. Once these rockets had reached orbit, they would have to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and boy, this part's wild. The Nexus rocket wasn't going to use parachutes, nor would it use retro rockets like the SpaceX rockets we have today. No, it would simply rely on its vast surface area to slow itself down. As it was now an empty rocket, with just engines and hollow fuel tanks, it was larger than it was heavier, and thus the aerothermal heating would be spread over a larger surface area. The dome of the rocket would be built out of titanium and be thicker near the leading edges up to around 5 feet thick. Because of the aerodynamics involved, those four flaps would deploy and tilt the rocket nose first into the Earth's atmosphere. Getting near to the water surface, the forward dome of the rocket would fire its thrusters to bring the whole mass to a stop. That's 9 million pounds of thrust all at once. These rockets would also boil the surface of the ocean just before impact, turning it into a bubbling foaming mess somewhat linked to a pillow that would better distribute over the surface of the craft when it broke the water surface. As for the titanium shell, that would be utterly smashed when it hit the water, but could be easily replaced. Convair did apparently look into parachutes, but the rocket system was chosen as they were simpler and had less points of failure. So what exact missions did Convair have in mind for such a large rocket? The Nexus rockets were designed in mind to carry interplanetary spacecraft, like the Apollo, but significantly larger. These flights around the solar system would require vast sums of liquid hydrogen, something that would be incredibly expensive to transport in small batches, hence why the size of the Nexus kicked ass. Convair estimated that a single Nexus would allow for deep space missions without the difficulty of assembling a new ship in orbit and refueling it. And Convair estimated a lot of things. And now this next part is probably going to hurt space fans the most. A timeline from 1962 for Convair's plans to conquer the solar system. The most conservative plans of Convair estimated a Mars landing by 1982, a Mars base by 1986, a manned flyby of Jupiter by 1997, and the most ambitious plans saw operations to Uranus and Neptune before the mid-1990s. There was also a plan for an even bigger rocket. Stop it. Get some help the Super Nexus, able to not only get 1 million pounds into orbit, but to the lunar surface itself before the year 2000. So what the heck happened to our beloved Nexus rocket? You see, the Nexus was part of a grand optimistic vision from the early 60s that was before the Vietnam War and before the so-called golden age of the aerospace industry in America. Let me explain. There was plenty of money, vision, but a distinct lack of actual progress so far in the field. 
At the time, the Atlas Centaur was the biggest rocket built and it could only get 8,000 pounds to orbit, a far cry from the Nexus goal of 1 million. And remember that titanium shell? Well, it required two acres of titanium and stainless steel to build, and not only would that be incredibly hard to source, but it would take months, if not years, to produce each shell. With the teething problems of the Saturn rocket program, the engineers looking at the Nexus saw it as a long and painful road. Additionally, a single stage to orbit of this scale was prone to issues with weight, issues that could be easily solved switching to multiple stages like the aforementioned Saturn V, although there were economic woes. With the demise of the 1963 optimistic roadmap for the future, the colossal launch platforms like the Nexus simply didn't make sense and were no longer needed from the 70s onwards. But man, looking at it back from my desk chair today, at this project, its blueprints and everything that was planned and involved, what an incredible time we would be alive in had the Convair Nexus been built. Special thanks to Scott from Aerospace Projects Review who wrote an excellent article on his website all about this project. If you want to read more and see other crazy things, then jump onto his website with the link down below. It really is worth checking out. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'm going to end the video right now.